this is uh, from my from my time working at uh, as a toy designer. I wasn't very successful at it. They 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 wanted features. You know, they have there's styling and there's features when you do toys. Um, you know, feature is they want to you know, come up with a way for Barbie to do a backflip or you know a remote control car to do do something flip over sideways or whatever. But I was always more interested in what the toy looked like. I liked making pretty toys, and I really enjoyed <coughs> making these schematics. Um, you know, we would come up with features, feature toy, uh, toy feature designs, and then we would present them to the large toy company, Mattel, or whatever, and if they liked them, they would buy the idea from one of these storyboards uh, in exchange for royalties. But um, by contract, I couldn't show anybody anything I did at this toy company, because it's their property, and if, even if nobody buys it for the, you know, forever, they may, it may come up 10 years from now that somebody wants to buy it. So I never got to keep any. So I decided, you know, I, wanted, I, I really liked making those toy schematics. So I created this uh, for myself, just as a piece of art. I came up with, a, I made up a toy, uh, little capsules where you can mix and match them, a little character. And, uh, once I was done with the illustration, I'm like, eh, it's actually not a bad idea. So I showed it to a couple of people, and boom, they loved it. So we went ahead and produced it, and the illustration got put away, because I couldn't show anybody. Again, <laughs> and then this is them now, and you can actually go out and find these. I was, I'm, I'm really an unexpected toy designer. I never set out to be a toy designer. It's just kind of where I've fallen into, um, but I do enjoy it. This is the gummy bear in that uh, illustration. Uh, Jeff, a uh, company in Hong Kong liked it and decided to make it into a toy. Forever. This project got canceled four or five times. I think it's from the time that they saw it and wanted to produce it uh, to the time that it actually made it onto the shelf is about five years. Um, and you know, most toys is a year, year and a half. But this one was uh, extremely painful. This is it. As you see it now, we try to restock them if anybody's asking for them. I get asked constantly. Uh, but uh, we're, we're making more. All right, and this is just my last thing. I, I, for my sculptures, um, I, I have my Facebook page, and I guess that's a lot of how most people know about what I do, but I, I, I like to, in a, in a Bob Ross fashion, um, show my process as I go. Uh, so, you know, and it's just as much of uh, me discovering as it is for the people. I, you know, I, I don't, like I said, I don't know a lot of what the things are going to look like until I actually do them. Uh, I found this giant cutie doll. Uh, this is it before I, I start in on it. And I take it apart and I fill it with a, a, an expanding high density polyurethane foam. It's very hard when it hardens. And then I start cutting the section off as the face removed. And then I start uh, going in, throwing out, mapping out where the way the bones are going to be and, and grinding away with it. Uh, drilled it. It's very easy to, to work with. It's, it's, soft. it's, it's very dense and hard, but the, a drill that goes through it like butter. Uh, some smaller details that I have to use uh, an epoxy clay with. Because, I, mean, I can't hold the detail on that foam. Uh, this is kind of more of a step-by-step. -step uh, carving up the ribs, adding in the uh, digestive system, more bones, more detail. <coughs> Priming it once it's all done, and then filling in all the little nooks and crannies and sanding it, and priming it again so it becomes more smooth. Um, now we get into the painting process. Paint it all white, and I start going with the bones and painting in the anatomy. It's all done with acrylics, all airbrushed. Uh, some of it's hand painted, depending on what is easier and what is uh, more appropriate. Mask off the inner anatomy, and then I start going and painting the outside, and then that's the finished piece. It is after it's nice shiny clear coat. This one stood about 18 inches tall. And, uh, that's my daughter <laughs> freaking me out. <laughs> and she's holding her doll 
in her hand so she, you know, so I can't get a hold of it. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you so much. Um, the way, I mean, the way you sculpted, you're almost like the doctor, I think. So. Because, I mean, to combine, like, the idea of opening upper body with an image could be really easy just to Photoshop or something. The way you do it, you're really like a doctor sculpting it. Can you talk a little bit how, how it feels for you and how you study the first time you did it? If you feel like you heard something or you know something on that level? Well, my, my, I have a son also, and he, uh, he always loved it. But then again, I started doing it when he was about five or six years old. My daughter, um, sorry, my, <laughs> my daughter would get upset, not because she thought I was freaking out you know, or doing something creepy, but it was because I was breaking her, breaking her toy. Yeah. So I got to the point where I had to start buying two of everything, but um, you know, I look at it as a, as a reverse forensics. I, I, you know, when they find a skeleton under, you know, in a crime scene, they have to build up the face to see what it looks like. I use, I do the opposite, where um, I let the shape of whatever character define what a skeleton is going to be. We're all, we're all the same on the inside. You know, our shape is made up of uh, muscles and whatever. So they're, it's very logical. I never, I don't know much about um, animals, but do you, are there animals which don't have don't have bones and also have material? And you thought about doing other I, I um, did, structures? I didn't put a picture of it, but I did do the very hungry caterpillar, uh, which you know is just mush on the inside. And although there is a stomach and a, and a, you know, a digestive path, but I think that's probably the only one that I've done. But there's a there's a lot of others, and I and I, I want to move towards it. I, mean, I have a show coming up, and they really want. The anatomies. So I've been doing a lot of anatomy. So now that once the show happens, I'm going to dive into some, you know, explore new things. And, uh, you know, it's still going to be anatomy, but it's going to be very different than what you see. How do you research? Do we have, do we have imagine you have like a huge collection of Ephesus biological? Or? I would use my kids, uh, uh, you know, anatomy books. Uh, you know, it's I, I'm not. I never studied anatomy. I mean, anybody that knows anatomy will look at this and say this guy has never studied anatomy. But there is a lot of, you know, reality to it. Organs are there, and they are pretty much placed there. But I, I don't get too detailed. I don't get, you know, there are things that are left out. But. And then on the practical note, how long does it take you uh, to make something like that? That one, well, this is this one's not a very good example because this one was really big. This one took about six weeks uh, to do. But you know, the smaller ones. When I first started, I started using uh, uh, a polymer clay, like Sculpey. Um, I can do I can do a little one in like five days, you know, but I had to bake the entire toy, I had to bake this clay, so I had to put the toy in, so the toy had to be vinyl, because it was the only thing that could withstand the heat. If it was PVC or ABS class, it would just melt. Um, and the, the clay is not very durable, so I, I got introduced to an epoxy clay, which is a two-part epoxy that you can mix together, uh, but you only have about a half hour to work with it before it starts to harden, so you have to really plan your attack. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm going to do this little piece now, and then and even, even though it's hard enough to not sculpt anymore, uh, it's still soft enough to be it. So I have to sit it aside and let it sit for like four hours before I can move on to the next part. So it's gotten a lot longer. <coughs> and then, uh, do you, when you said, for example, the Hong Kong company did the toy, do you, how about that, these additions? Do you do that a lot, or is that rare? You do I, I never, I've never set out to do any toys, and anything that I've done that has turned into a toy is because somebody saw it and said, hey, I want to make this yeah. a toy. I, mean, I, think a lot, I think it's great. Yeah, well, you know, it's happened three or four times. Um, I, I, you know, I'm always just, I'm just there to sculpt, I'm just there to make stuff. And if somebody finds interest in it and they want to run with it, sure, let's go. Mm. Okay. My next question is, um, from, from the company, they, they start to complain because they think this is a multiple in, industrial toy, and it's, that's the one side that goes on your nerves, but I, I think you probably get a lot of fan mail who want to buy, I, and they think it, it, it should be priced as a toy and don't understand that it is. Uh, you're absolutely right, yes, and I, I never really thought about that, but 99% uh, you know, of people that ask once I tell them how much, you know, if you sit and you watch the process while I'm doing it, then you get it. You know, it's, it, 
from the start to when I finish it, it's, it's a couple of weeks, and I, you know, and I, and I do this now for, you know, full time, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, because of the clay, I, I come down with the system now where I'm actually doing like five at a time, so mm -hmm. I'll do this, and I'll put that over here, and I'll move on to the next character, and I'll do this part, and I'll move on to that, and throughout, throughout the day, I can probably do four or five sections on four or five different characters. But the latest multiple that I know of is uh, the Rubik's Cube? All oh, right, the, uh, the brain cube. Mm -hmm. It wasn't character based. That's why I didn't include it. But, uh, but that was, yeah, that was a sculpture that I just thought it would be cool. I never thought of it as an actual toy. But I took a, a Rubik's cube and I carved it as if it were a cubic, you know, shaped brain. But it actually functioned. You can mix it up, and the folds of the brain have to all be lined up. And uh, and a company saw that, and they produced it. it's uh, Marvel's the brain cube. You can actually mm -hmm. go online and get one now. That also helps, like if people then say we want to own something from you and it should be Jack, then you tell them get the brain. Sure, it's it's certainly you know an option. There's a lot of compromises when you come to manufacturing toys. Uh, you know you can't get the detail, you can't get a lot of undercuts and stuff. Uh, so it's, you know, in my opinion, it's kind of a, a lesson in you know, the nature. Of the Last question I have before I ask it. Anyone has one? Uh, there's this Korean artist who did um, skeletons of Mickey Mouse and yes. of Donald Donald. Right. It's should you uh, do me? There's been a, there's been several. I'm not the, I'm not the first one to do this. There, you know, there's also Michael Palis who uh, really started getting into doing uh, pencil sketches of uh, you know, anatomical characters. And the, there's anatomical characters that go back to the 60s. Mm -hmm. You know, where uh, Japanese uh, kaiju you know characters that you know they show with the inside. The, it, this has been going on for at least 45 years. So I'm not the first. I, 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 I think what I've injected into is, is actually taking physical toys and, and putting the amount inside it. Any questions from your side? <coughs> okay, otherwise, well, thank you very much.